guys, let's just take an overview. Since A and B are in here, um, I wanna just determine what case they are. So things I note, I see my absolute value expression here. It's not isolated, so that's like a little red flag, but I do see my greater than or equal to symbol. I see my absolute value expression here with the equal sign. So before I figure out what case they are, I really do need to isolate my absolute value term. So let me subtract the six here and we will get five minus eight X in absolute value has to be greater than or equal to, oops, 14 minus six is eight. And here, this one already is isolated. So I'm good to go there. So when I'm looking at these, I see the greater than or equal to symbol here and the equal to symbol here. So when I wanna go solve these, I know that at least example 7a is gonna be a case three, and example 7b is gonna be a case one. So let me go write those down just to take notes here. This is case three, and this is case one. Now you don't always have to go through and figure out, you don't have to label this as case three, case one, case two but just to help you organize your thoughts. Okay, so if I'm gonna go case three and we take a look at how that's set up, I need to set up two inequalities. I need whatever's in my absolute value expression to be greater than K, my K in this case is eight, or I need whatever's in my absolute value expression to be less than negative K or less than negative eight. So let's set these up. I'm gonna have five minus eight X is greater than or equal to eight, or five minus eight X. All right, we need to change this direction, and then we need to change the sign on eight. Those will be my two inequalities that I need to write. Okay, so now it's time to solve this. I'm gonna move the eight X over here, and the eight over here, so I think I'm gonna have 13 is less than or equal to eight X, here I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna have negative three is greater than or equal to eight X as I'm working through these. All right, now again, I like when my variables are on the left side of my inequality, so I'm gonna have eight X greater than or equal to 13, or this is gonna be eight X is less than or equal to negative three. Oops, it's a weirdly written negative three. Now I'm gonna divide by eight so I'm looking at x is greater than or equal to 13 eighths, or x is less than or equal to negative 3 eighths. All right, now, because I had a negative 8x in here, that actually meant that this inequality, when I solved it, was going to give me the smaller number than this one. And you can see negative 3 eighths is a smaller number than positive 13 eighths. I'm gonna cram this in here just so we can see all of it. If I was going to write this on the number line, just so that we have a visual, if I wanted to graph my solution, right, I would have negative 3 eighths here and positive 13 eighths here. And if I was gonna go less than or equal to negative 3 eighths, I would fill in my circle and shade all the way to the left. And if I was gonna go greater than or equal to 13 eighths, I would fill in my circle and go all the way to the right. And anytime you go left or right on the x-axis, we're talking about positive infinity on the right, negative infinity on the left. So if I wanted to write up my solution, I would actually say negative infinity to negative 3 eighths or 13 eighths to positive infinity. All right, so that's how we would write up our answer if we were in interval notation. There's the graph and there's my two inequalities. All right, so if we look at example 7b, that's a case one. I have isolated that absolute value expression and we actually talked about the mechanics of this, how you solve this back in section 2.6. But I'm gonna set up two equations I'm gonna let x equal k or x equal negative k, or really it's whatever expression is in that absolute value symbol, set it equal to k or negative k. So for this one, let me put a little barrier there. We're gonna have 4x plus 13 is equal to seven, or 4x plus 13 is equal to negative seven. So now I'm gonna go through and solve these. These are two linear equations. I'll have 4x is equal to negative six, 
or 4x will be equal to, looks like negative 20. Here I will get negative 3 halves. Here I will get negative 5. So those are my two numbers, my two answers. If I want to write that up in set notation, because these are just two isolated points, and again, let me graph this for you, just so we have a visual. Actually, I'm going to erase the therefore and graph it first, just so we can see it. All right, so on my x-axis, I have negative 5, and then I have negative 3 halves. Now, I'm not shading anything in between because these are equal signs. These are just the isolated points here. So when we're talking about just the isolated points, we use these squiggles, and we just make a list of all of our numbers that we want to include. So these symbols are, are, I think they're called chevrons, but don't quote me on that, but they're neither brackets nor parentheses. They're squiggly, and that's what they represent. I don't want everything between negative five and three, negative three halves. I just want negative five and three halves exactly. All right, so with that, let's start taking a look at some other questions. Uh, let's, let's move this up, and we're gonna take a look at C and D. So let me scooch this up. And then as we look at this, I want us to try and figure out well, which case am I dealing with? Does this seem like a case one, a case two, or a case three? And just on site, I see that my, my radical, not my radicals, excuse me, my absolute value expressions, they're isolated. So that's a start. I don't have to worry about isolating them initially, but I have the greater than symbol here and the less than or equal to symbol here. So let's work that. If I have the greater than symbol, Right? We know that's a case three. If I have the less than or equal to, it's a version of case two. So let me go write those down. Right, so I have case three or case two. All right, so when it's case three, I'm going to set up two inequalities. All right, so we will take whatever is in our absolute value expression, set it greater than K, and then we will take whatever's in our absolute value expression and set it less than negative k. So let's try that. I'm going to take 6x minus 9, and I'm going to set it to be greater than 2, or I'm going to take 6x minus 9 and let it be less than negative 2. So from that absolute value in inequality, I set up two inequalities to solve this. And here we go. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. I'm looking at 6x is less than 7 or 6x is greater than 11. Okay, so as I start to solve these, I'm gonna divide by six. I'm gonna get x is less than 7 sixths, or x is greater than 11 sixths. Now this is the larger number, which it, it, it should be. Whenever you have a positively coefficient, this side will give you the, positive, uh, the, the larger number. So if I wanna do less than 7 sixths or greater than 11 sixths, now, it's your call. If you think you can go from the inequality to interval notation, do it. If you think you need a graph to kind of help you, do it. Uh, both are totally acceptable. So if you feel like you need the graph, right, you're, you're thinking, you know, I think a number line would just help me figure out where I am, then by all means, do it. No shame in that. So we got 7, 6. We've got 11, 6. I've got open dots. Shade to the right open dot, shade to the left. All right, and then I know this is infinity. Oops, let me get the x out of the way. This is negative infinity, right? This is the x-axis. Um, so I can write this up as negative infinity to 7 sixth, union 11 sixth to positive infinity. All right, now eventually you'll get to the point, or I hope you will, that you can jump from here, the inequalities, just to the interval notation. And if you don't get to that point, if you need to write the graph, like I said, awesome, no shame in that. Okay, so we got a case two here. All right, now case two, different mechanics than case three. Obviously, that's why we call it case two. I'm gonna make a three-part inequality. So negative K, whatever's in the absolute values, and then the K value. All right, so my K value here is five. So I'm gonna set negative five is less than or equal to two minus five X is less than or equal to five. All right, I'm gonna subtract two from all sides. So I'm gonna get negative seven 
is less than or equal to negative 5x is less than or equal to 3. I need to divide by negative 5. Spidey senses are going off because I need to change the direction of the inequality. So I'm going to have here 7 fifths is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to negative 3 fifths. But you'll notice this is the smaller number. Negative 3 fifths is smaller than 7 fifths. So I want to write that on the left side, and I want 7 fifths on the right side, and I want to leave x in the middle. So this is going to turn into negative 3 fifths is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7 fifths. So if you change the ordering here, if you move negative 3 fifths from right to left and 7 fifths from left to right, make sure you change the directions of those inequalities, right? They were greater than or equal to's, now they're less than or equal to's. And again, you could make, if you wanted, go ahead and make a number line. But at this point, with this three-part inequality, I know that my low is negative 3 fifths, my high is positive 7 fifths, I have the equals to on each of them, so I'm going to put the brackets, okay? All right, so with that, I'm going to scooch this up just a little bit, and we're going to take a look at E and F. And you might look at E and F and then say, well, why didn't you give me that much space to work on these? Because if you look at E and F, you're seeing like there's just this much space where on C and D I gave you a whole chunk of space. And you might be thinking, I know this is a case three, and this is a case two, but there's no work involved in either of these. Let's talk about why, if you recognize it, there's absolutely no work to be done. You can jump to your answer. You've got an absolute value here, and on the right side, you have a negative number. Now that is special. Something funky is happening. We did not have negative numbers on the right side of our either our equations or our inequalities in example six or in example seven A, B, C, D. This is the first time we're running into negative numbers on the right side of the inequality. Now think about any number that comes out of an absolute value. It's automatically positive, right? Absolute values are positive or zero. They're never negative. So there's no number you could plug in for X where this wouldn't be true. Anything that comes out of here is automatically greater than negative two because this is zero or it's positive, right? Try a number, try 10. Six times 10, 60. 60 minus nine, 51. Absolute value, 51, 51. 51 is automatically, it's just, it's greater than two because you had a positive number here and that's always greater than a negative number. Try something like zero. Six times zero, zero. Zero minus nine, negative nine. Well, the absolute value of negative nine is nine, which is a positive number that's definitely greater than negative two. So let's just take note here that absolute values are either positive or zero. All right, so we'll go note. Absolute values. Oops, I'm gonna run out into that space. All right, are either positive. They're usually positive. There's a chance they're zero. So if they're positive or zero, I'll put the therefore, we know they're always going to be larger than negative two. And again, another way of saying that is it doesn't matter what number I put in. I can literally plug anything in for x and it's gonna work. So my answer here is all real numbers. If you were gonna draw this on the number line, I would literally want to shade in every single number on that number line. And another way of saying that is I wanna go from negative infinity, my low, to positive infinity, my high, and I'm always gonna put parentheses around those answers. So my answer here, all real numbers, or another way of saying that, I'm going negative infinity, to positive infinity. Now, why is there no work on part F? Well, again, take note of the negative number here, right? When is an absolute value less than a negative number? And the answer here is never. For the same reason, absolute values, they're either positive or zero. So we'll, we know they're never going to be smaller than a negative number. All right. 
right, so let's write this up. Here's our second note. All right, absolute values. Again, always positive or zero. Again, usually they're positive, occasionally they're zero. All right, so therefore, we know they will never be less than negative five. All right, so never here, but always here. So absolute values, they're always bigger than negative numbers, but they're never less than negative numbers. So here, it doesn't matter what x value you plug in, it will never work. Let's try zero. Five times zero, zero. Two minus zero, two. Absolute value of two, two. Is two less than or equal to negative five? Nope. And you can try any number you want. So here, there is no solution. All right, and that's why I didn't leave that much room for parts E and F, because there's no work involved. When you have this negative number on the right side, of an absolute value equation or inequality, something funky is gonna happen. Here, absolute value is always greater than po uh, negative numbers. Absolute value is never less than a negative number. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip to our last example and we're gonna practice writing up absolute values when they represent distance from a number. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.